There's bocce ball, shuffleboard. Beautiful There's camping spots. All oh. got your apparatus. <laughs> it was free. <laughs> it was free. Natural phenomenons <laughs> in one. I don't even Feels know like how to describe it. Like it's a bunch spongy. of... Everybody seems like they're wanting to get out and about that was shining down on this petroglyph. 108 miles away, you can see from here. Is it worth getting out of the air conditioning? Yes, it is. We're seeing a lot of RVs coming through here. Occupied between 1250 and 1380 CE. Because they believe that their loved ones are still here. Mix the two together and that creates the purple. Yeah. yeah. Should be a bucket list. Yeah. And you'll have to leave your car here. They will confiscate it. We're at the Venture Inn RV Resort in Sholo, Arizona. It's a 55 plus resort. There's bocce ball, shuffleboard, as well as lots of activities inside the activity center, which we've not been able to go in yet because it's been closed. A lot of these sites are kind of a red gravel with a concrete patio. Like this, I would say probably three-fourths of this resort is made up of these park models. Yeah. People either rent out or snowbirds here or live here year-round. Mm -hmm. And then about a quarter of them are for RV sites. Some of their sites are concrete pads as well. One nice thing is on the other side, you have a place for parking here. All full hookups. We have uh, Dilly Dolly is sitting behind <laughs> Vinny here. It's been a while since we said Dilly Dolly. There's Dilly Dolly. We got plenty of room here. Like I said, full hookups. You got cable TV. Cable is a little iffy. We've heard around that some of the uh, cable is not working. I got a rock in my shoe. I can't get out. A nice place though. Very nice place. And then right down the road, I'd say, what was it? A couple miles? Mm -hmm. Not very far. We have a state park that has beautiful camping nice. spots. All concrete pads with some beautiful views. A lot lots, of them do. Lots of shade. Yeah. And it's $35 a night there for full hookups. We went down there last night and uh, we took some videos. We'll share with you right here. Not a bad place, huh? It's beautiful. <laughs> Michelle had one of her little rubber bandy apparatuses for her hair break on her, so she had to go in and get some more. Got your apparatus? <laughs> rubber bands and extra. All right. Apparatus. I think we're good to go to the petrified forest. Forest National Park. That. Surfing on a web of good feelings. Well, it's just another Friday. Supposed to be what $25? A vehicle, yeah. Unless you have the annual America the Beautiful Pass and then it should be free. We're gonna find out. Looks like the visitor center is actually open. If you come past that here, there'll be the booth where you uh, where you pay. And the entrance fee did, did say on the sign is good for seven days. Hi. Hi, welcome. You need to see the back side of the pass and an ID to match from the signatures. Okay. Okay. 
good news. It was free. <laughs> it was free. $25 per vehicle. Again, with the uh, America the Beautiful Pass, the annual pass. That makes it free. Can't wait to see it. It's really cool. It's like there's some trails down in there, too, that you can hike. How come the stars come to shine when it's dark? From so far away, show us where we are. What makes the sun go to sleep every night? And what's it dreaming of? So the Petrified Forest National Park is within the Painted Desert. So you kind of get two natural phenomenons <laughs> in one. Phenomenon. How come the sky sometimes hides behind the clouds? Maybe it's just like me, a little bit scared of heights. Why does the rain always keep on pouring down when it's gray outside? It really makes me wonder. I think this is as far as I'm going to go. The ground is, yeah, it makes feels a little soft. It's starting to really slope here, and it looks like a little bit of a drop off. It makes me wonder. So nice of you to join us. Uh, Come with me. It is. That ground, doesn't that ground feel a little soft? It's weird. I don't even know like how to describe it. Like it's a bunch spongy. of. Spongy. the trees get undressed when it's cold? And don't they miss the leaves they left behind? Maybe those are petrified wood that a woodchuck chucked. Oh my. That was called the Painted Desert Rim Trail. And if a woodchuck could chuck wood, and then the woodchuck would chuck wood. Mystery solved. Could it be to make the ground shine like cold until winter comes? Until winter comes? Until winter comes? Everybody seems like they're wanting to get out and about. And they do. Seen a lot of RVs today. Yes, <laughs> there are. There sure are, aren't there? A lot of RVs out. I've There's noticed a, that too. It looks kind of like a little mud house. <laughs> something the Pueblo would have built or something. Welcome, but the building's closed. Thanks for coming. How come the stars come to shine when it's dark? From so far away, show us where we are. The ranger said that that goes pretty much anywhere. It's like free game. You can walk wherever you want throughout. He said, nothing to worry about though, because you can see this place from everywhere, which is true just head back but that direction. That don't look very far, but I'm telling you that. That's far. That's quite a ways. It really makes me wonder. Yeah, it makes me wonder. So your climb coming back up out of that hole, it's going to be very tiring. Very, very good workout though. That's a challenge. We were talking to a ranger over here and he was telling us the one place that we don't want to miss was the, the blue, blue Mesa. Blue Mesa. He said, if anything, make sure you see that. Somewhere around in here, there's some petroglyphs, uh -huh. um, ancient drawings. And on June 21st, which is like the first day of summer, he went in the morning to one of the petroglyphs that uh, symbolizes the solstice. At morning light, there was like a finger of light um. that was shining down on this petroglyph that symbolized the solstice, like the summer solstice. He seemed very amazed when he saw that yeah he did i wish we could have got him on camera but he's a volunteer and so they would wouldn't let him be on camera the car says 99 degrees it says 100 now i don't think those are always right it's hot nine percent humidity though thank god yeah there's one big ugly bird this is Pentado Point. Pinnacles are right there. So, over there is 
San Francisco peaks. All these little peaks over here that Michelle was pointing out had a name to them, and then the San Francisco peaks that are in Flagstaff. In Flagstaff, 108 miles away, you can see from here, and I don't know if you can see it on this GoPro, but it is way over there. history buff doesn't want to come and see that. <laughs> is it worth getting out of the air conditioning? Yes it is. Oh you're just saying that. No no. No. Everything is worth getting out of the I air conditioning, isn't it? As long as Everything. you can, you you stay in here with the car running I'll get out. I'll make sure the air keeps going. Okay. okay. It is very windy out there. And this is called Nizhoni Point, N-I-Z-H-O-N-I -I Point. We are right there. We are up here, we just started here, and we got all of this. Make sure you got a whole day planned to do this, especially if you're gonna go hiking. The next point is called Whipple Point. Remember Mr. Whipple from the Charmin commercials? Don't squeeze the Charmin. Some of these points, you'll notice that it gives you just a little bit different view. But this one was so close, it's not much different. One thing a lot of you probably know is the red color is from the iron. And then when we get up to Blue Mesa, the blue represents manganese. So when you see any blue colors, that's your manganese. And then when you see a purple, that is your manganese mixed with iron. We're seeing a lot of RVs coming through here. So if you're wondering if you can come through this national park, where we've been seeing trucks with fifth wheels, class A's, you got two class A's right there. And of course, anything smaller. On to the next. Next. It's a 0.3 mile loop trail that highlights the petroglyphs and ancestral Puebloan homes occupied between 1250 and 1380 CE. So what we found out from the, the park ranger or whatever he was, <laughs> that they don't like to refer to these as the ruins. They like to refer to them as ancestral dwellings because they believe that their loved ones are still here and still living spiritually. That's why they do not like the term ruins. Shall we go check it out? Yes. See the petroglyphs on the rocks right here and over there. Look at on the side of that rock. So cool. Migration symbol. That's that one right there. And look, it's like got a purse. <laughs> Looks like it's was a big bird. <laughs> They probably didn't trust them back then or something, and they thought they were evil. Especially with the red eyes. Who knows? It's hard to say. On 
Oh, so this is that summer solstice uh, marker that the guy was telling us yeah. about. This boulder right here with the black facing up. This boulder here that has this crack in it. Okay. This is the picture it shows when the sun reaches a certain point of the day, it shines through there on that uh, dark side and like they've got pictures of what it looks like at the time. it is to our next uh, point that we're going to stop to yeah. say like as the crow flies yeah. okay I think he said one mile why might you ask would they call it newspaper rock well it would be my guess it's because of all the petroglyphs all over the rocks like you're reading a newspaper probably yeah oh. it's supposed to be over 650 petroglyphs Wow. That some date back over 2,000 years old. Wow. Really appreciate those directions. Got us right here. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Uh, appreciate it, Smith talked earlier. Now we just came to the Blue Mesa entrance. It's a three and a half mile loop. It's 3.36 right now and this place closes at 5 p.m. FYI. So give yourself plenty of time. Up here in Blue Mesa, we just pulled up in an area that shows where this, uh, the blue and the purple linings of the rock. And remember, the, the blue is your manganese mineral, your red, is your iron of course and then you mix the two together and that creates the purple so I wanted to tell you that while we're inside because it's so windy outside up here especially up here there's a lot of petrified wood logs around here there's one here that's pretty cool. There's a few. And they're all over, as you can see, on top of that ledge over there. There's a few pieces here. Piece in that embankment right over here. An old tree log there. Would you follow me to wonders? Take my hand and walk beside. Find it hard to not give in. 
Agate Bridge features sweeping views and a 110 foot long petrified log bridge. Cool. When you Ooh, that's cool. Left, I was so completely gone, but now I'm sure you were some of the best of things to find. This is called Jasper Forest. All those little dark spots down here are all petrified wood. Would you follow me to so this place contains one of the largest accumulations of petrified wood in the world. This is called Crystal Forest. I'm guessing this is why they call it Crystal Forest. Yeah. That's the crystal. That is pretty cool. Colors in that one. Look at all that red. You ever seen so much wood? No. When you look at me this way, I find it hard to not give in. Rainbow Forest area was the original park headquarters from 1906 to 1962. 1920s, the museum was housed in a tar paper building, and instead of walking a trail, Buffy Road wove through giant logs. It's crazy to, to think of this place used to be a lush forest millions of years ago. should be a bucket list. It's really cool. Thinking of how old it is and everything? Yeah. Yeah. Should be a bucket list. Yeah. Expect to be in here for a while and bring lots of water and maybe a snack. <laughs> Unlike what we did. Because we're Food starving. Be Don't do what we do. <laughs> now I see why they call this particular area the Rainbow Forest because the, All the colors. colors that are in the wood. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you can't tell on the uh, film but we're on the video but it's really pretty the only bad thing about coming here right now is B. <laughs> not the B. a lot of the buildings being closed due to covid yeah actually but. i do i do think most of those the buildings did say they were closed well that was pretty cool and that was very well worth it definitely it's time for us to go get some grub not eat grubs no no grub pie going to get some grub yes. as in food and shower because we are hot and sweaty pretty sure everybody just clicked off <laughs> watching this video just then oh here at the end we've also got a museum looks like it's on both sides here's what happens <laughs> if you try to take some petrified wood they will come find you and they will let the air out of all your tires <laughs> and you will have to leave your car here. They will confiscate it. That was funny. Thanks for coming along on our adventure today and we'll catch you in next week's video. Let's call it a day. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click that little bell and hit that thumbs up. See you next week.